Make it, let, 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 let get it poppin', boy. Bada bing, bada boom. Bada boom, boom. Rosa was a woman in her 80s. Her husband had passed away recently, and she had six kids, six full grown adult kids with children of their own, and they all love spending time with her. It's like one big happy family. So they would come over on the weekends. They would bring her food, bring her new shoes. They would brush her hair out for her. Literally, whatever Grandma Rosa wanted, they would do it for her. Oh, she's a grandma? Yeah, that makes sense. Rosa would forget which one is which, or maybe she would forget which one was married, or maybe on that particular day, she would be convinced that her husband actually never died. Rosa has dementia. And if anyone had a family member who had dementia, it's 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 hard. My grandmother on my mom's side had it. And there were so many times where my grandma would mistake me as my mom. She would talk to me as if I was the younger version of my mom. Or sometimes my dad would pick her up and this is her son-in-law. And instead of remembering him as her son-in-law, she would instead treat him like a nice, friendly taxi driver that would take her out to lunch. There was a point where she even tried to pay him for his driving services. Some mm. days were better than others for Rosa and her family kind of knew that. But recently it seemed like things had gotten like so much worse. Rosa would point at the door at the end of the hallway and she would just point and stare. Rudy is there. Rudy is in that room. Rudy is here. Her children, who are now adults with children of their own, they would all kind of glance at each other and then one of them would finally crouch down to be eye level with Rosa. And they would say things like, Mom, it's okay. You're probably just tired. Rudy's not in there. Who the hell is Rudy? And she would continue pointing. Rudy's in there. Rudy's in that room. And they would sigh and they would let it go. I love Again. That. That creepy, they right? all knew who she was talking about. <laughs> Rudy Farias was a boy who had gone missing in Houston five years ago. But their mom had dementia. There's no way that Rudy Farias was in that room at the end of the hallway. There's no way. Unless. Three years after Rosa passed away, Rudy was found alive. He had been living in that locked room at the end of the hallway for the past eight years. He had been held captive, not by Rosa, but by somebody else. Ooh. I ain't gonna lie though. If, if, if my mom had dementia, but she said somebody was in that room, I'm not just gonna be like, mom, you tripping. I'm gonna go check it out. Cause my mom could not be tripping. You know what I'm saying? They just never check the room, bro. As always, full show notes are available at RottenMingoPodcast.com. And this case has been highly requested. Can't be and mad it just at happened them. in I mean, June the, of this year. Dementia. So like not even a month ago. It was like end of June. And well, really in July is when everything started unraveling. So just a week or two ago, there is a chance that there's going to be more updates that's going to come out. But I personally don't think so. I mean, it's pretty radio silent on this case after the initial media frenzy. So from the way things are looking right now, it seems like the captor is going to face absolutely no charges and or punishments for their crimes. What? Yeah. What? It, it's this is a wild one. Every part of this case feels stranger than fiction, feels stranger than a book. So let's get into the mysterious disappearance of hey, Rudy Farias. What is our justice system? How much do you really know about your neighbors? You know, None. and I know it's giving like, how do you know your neighbor's not a serial killer? How do you know? Like, how do you know it's not happy father by day, Gilgo beach killer by night? But what if that annoying neighbor down the street that makes you want to roll your eyes, you just don't like her. What if you found out that eight years ago, she went through the most traumatic thing a mother could ever experience? Would that make you more sympathetic? Like, would that make you want to be nicer to her? Okay. Most yeah. of the neighbors had no idea about what had happened to Janny. I mean, it had been eight years, but a few, like a very select few number of neighbors had been around town, had been in Houston for a long time. Okay. And they would remember the stories of like back in the day. What the hell happened They were good about never bringing it up. I mean, why bring up a painful past, right? Yeah. Wait, I want to know what happened. I, I do. What yeah. happened? What happened? Eight years ago, Janny, the lady's son, Rudy Farias, went missing. He was 17 years old. It was March 6, 2015. Oh, was he like kidnapped? I'm not sure, but apparently he went to walk the family's two dogs one night after dinner. Uh -huh. And one by one, the dogs showed up at the front door with their leash dangling behind them. But he never came back. Rudy was gone, and he hasn't been seen alive since. But you know, Janie's never stopped looking for him, that poor woman. Oh my god. Are there any leads? Did anyone see anything? 
I mean, nothing's for certain, but Janie seems to think that Rudy has been human trafficked. Other people think that maybe it has something to do with his biological dad. How old was uh, Rudy? 17. Yeah. Oh, wow. Um, his biological dad was a police officer, and he died. Uh. But it's it's just a sad story all around, you know. Rudy's brother passed away before he went missing, and the family was already grieving. And Something then suspicious. Rudy's biological dad was, uh, you know, fired, and then he took his own life from the police force. It's just, I don't know, I just feel bad for Janie. And I'm sure anyone who heard of Janie's story was probably thinking the same thing. Mm -mm. The way you say it is suspicious. There is no way they're going to find Rudy now. But I suppose Janie was a fighter. She's constantly on true crime forums to try and keep Rudy's name and case alive. She posted about how she was absolutely certain that this was a case of human trafficking. Those evil monsters are the ones that took her son. Mm. A lot of conversations. We're getting stirred up about the general safety in Houston, Texas. And Janie was fed up that the police weren't doing anything about it, nor were they doing anything about her missing baby that had been gone for years. And she hinted, maybe the reason why the police are being so nonchalant about this case, about my son being missing, is because there are some powerful human traffickers involved that have connections with the police. Mm -mm. She started hinting, Janie it. started hinting that even her own life was in danger. Strange things have been happening ever since Rudy vanished and ever since she started being vocal about this human trafficking thing. Another thing that added to this perception I was this. that Rudy's uncle, um, Uncle Jerry, he spoke on the two year anniversary of Rudy's disappearance. He gave a speech on National Missing Persons Day and he talked about how kind hearted Rudy was and That's how much he uncle. cared for those around him and how heartbroken Rudy's mom, Janie, was since he's been gone, you know, and the pain of like not knowing where your loved one is or how they're doing or if they're OK. That's probably the worst. There's no closure. Rudy's uncle Jerry never mentioned that he knew what happened to Rudy. He never mentioned anything suspicious or sinister that had happened. But the owner of a local Facebook page that the family would constantly interact with, it's called Houston's Voice for the Missing. Mm -hmm. They came out and they stated that Uncle Jerry had been working nonstop to find his nephew Rudy. And recently, after this speech was given, like two years after Rudy had disappeared, Jerry called the owner of that Facebook page and told him that he had new breaking information on Rudy's case. They were supposed to meet in a week. Uncle Jerry ended up dying from a motorcycle accident before then. The owner of the what? yeah, the Whoa. owner of the Facebook page never found out what Jerry wanted to say or what he knew. It just all seems so suspicious, doesn't it? Oh god. Oh god. Wow. So the initial thought from not only Janie but from most people in the community was that Rudy had been human trafficked and maybe the police had no interest in finding him because they didn't want to piss off these powerful traffickers. And then maybe the uncle, Uncle Jerry might have found out something that he shouldn't have and now they're in danger. Janie even brought up serial killers. She posted on forums about what? the Candyman, serial killer Dean Coral. I did a deep dive on Dean Coral a few years back. I might refilm the visuals for that one if you guys are interested. It is one of those cases that throughout the years has continued to stick with me. Like, I will randomly be staring at a wall and I will think about that case. It's just very <laughs> demented. What? He essayed and murdered almost 30 young boys in Houston, Texas in the 70s. And Janie was now posting about Dean Coral and saying things like, you know, Houston police say it doesn't happen to young boys. This is nothing new. Even back in the 70s, Houston police failed to investigate the many missing persons reports filed by various parents of these boys. And the police just viewed them as runaway cases like they're doing to my Rudy. I mean, she presents many a, of these boys came from the same area case. or the same neighborhoods. And even after all of that, that happened but in the I'm 70s with cat. the serial killer, our children are still being listed as runaways. I'm just so disappointed in the way that the Houston police handles missing children's cases, and I think something needs to change. My cat meat is going off. And after Janie would post on these off. forums, there would be like this <laughs> newfound interest in Rudy's case. But every single time, it would just fizzle out due to the sheer lack of evidence or even clues. But the community would randomly come together. They would make shirts with Rudy's pictures on them. They would spread pictures online. But it seemed like nothing was happening, even with all this work that they were putting into this case. And then something happened. What? A miracle happened. Whoa. June 29th of 2023, like a, a month ago, 10 p.m. at night, a call was made to emergency services. 911, what's your emergency? Hello? 
Yeah, uh, I'm here in front of the Immaculate Heart Church, and there's someone laying on the ground. Excuse me? Is this person conscious? Are they injured? Can you describe them for me? Uh, they, they seem not that conscious. I, I think they're injured, and it appears to be male, maybe in his 20s. Could, could you please send help? Help is on the way. Officers will be there shortly. The injured man in question was Rudy Farias. Whoa. But the officers didn't know that. Rudy had gone missing eight years ago. His yeah, face was forgotten that? in like the piles and piles of yeah. new cases that they had. Their department was consistently understaffed and underfunded. So when they arrive, it's not like this aha moment where an eight-year-old cold case had been solved finally, right? None of that. Yeah. It's just an injured man. Rudy's starting to gain consciousness when the officers arrive, and he was nonverbal. He seemed really scared and disoriented. He refused to speak with the officers. He didn't have his ID or his wallet on him, though he did have something in his pocket that becomes evidence later, but we're going to get there. The police were able to figure out his identity. They call his mom, Janie Santana, and they're like, come get your son. After eight long years of searching, your son has been found. She rushes to the scene and she's throwing herself onto the stretcher and she's screaming, that's my son, that's Rudy Farias, he's my son, he's been missing since 2015, this is him, this is my son. So it really was Rudy. I mean, his family had almost given up hope of, of even ever seeing him alive after eight years of no news, no updates, nothing, no clues. But here he is. Something to make he make still wouldn't sense, talk bro. to the police or anyone else for that matter, but still. At least he's home. Like this is a typical. This sounds like a typical would just have to like wait and figure out what miracle? happened, how he was injured, where he had been this whole time, and how he ended up in the parking lot of a Catholic church that was eight miles away from home. He had sores on his feet. He had cuts and bruises all over his body. He had blood in his hair, but those were all things that could heal. What couldn't heal are probably the memories of whatever happened in the past eight years. The trauma. Jenny posted on Facebook thanking everyone in their search for Rudy over the years. And, you know, she said, currently we have no additional information on Rudy's case. My son Rudy is receiving the care that he needs to overcome this trauma. But at this time, he's nonverbal. He's unable to communicate with us. We're asking for privacy during this difficult time, but we will share more details as he continues to heal. She stated that every time that she tries to talk to Rudy, he would say a couple of words, freeze up, and then crawl up into a fetal position. She knew that it was going to be a long, tough journey for him, but she's so thankful that he's just home and found alive. She hinted at the fact that whoever did this to Rudy, whatever he had gone through, was so bad that he couldn't even speak, that he was becoming nonverbal because of it, through the trauma. Mm. She posted Rudy's original missing persons photo and a new picture of him laying down, sleeping in a hospital bed. You can't really see much of Rudy in the new picture. The yeah. white blanket of the hospital bed is like pulled all the way up to his face and his body isn't that visible. But she mentioned that after eight years of being missing, the one thing that stayed the same with Rudy was he was wearing his brother's necklace around his neck. He had worn this the day that his brother had passed and the day that he went missing he was he never let go of it in the eight years he was Ew. missing so the public they obviously have questions after this news is released it's very similar to the carly russell case everyone's wondering okay is there someone that we should be on the lookout for like is there someone dangerous on the loose in this city like is this gonna happen to us Word. no doubt the police officers had questions of their own when Rudy was found, remember how I said there was one thing in his pocket that would be later key evidence? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There was one thing. A credit card issued to Janie Santana, his mother. That was in his pocket. Not suspicious. And if you want to just like bask in the happiness of this miracle coming together, nah, maybe it's I a don't. detail that you could ignore. I would like the... Uh, but the officers, they couldn't ignore it. See the reality. <clears throat> one of them brought it up. Maybe we should call the bank. They called the bank and found out that that credit card was issued two years ago. If Rudy had gone missing eight years ago, how did he get his mom's credit card that was issued just two years ago? Mm. Mm. That is crazy. That yeah. is wild. And as they're trying to get answers for their questions, they start getting calls from those that were close to Janie and the family. Janie's neighbors, primarily. And they told officers, hey, I, I saw all the news because this is making headline news at this point. Like, in... Not internationally, but nationally, not just in the state of Texas. And they told officers, that, that boy that was found after eight years, we're just a little bit confused because um, 
well, we know the mom. We're the mom's neighbors. And I'm pretty sure I saw that boy like a month ago at the house with his mom. What? <laughs> Most of us what didn't even if? know she had a son that was missing. We just found out. And that guy that I'm seeing on all these pictures is the son that she had in the house. I mean, wait, maybe she has another son. Are they twins? Like, we just want to verify. We just want to make sure that everything is a OK. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I'm pretty certain that that missing kid is the kid that we've seen in the neighborhood. Wow. And his name wasn't Rudy. It was Dolph. Side note, Rudy's full name is Rudolph. <laughs> when he talks to us, he doesn't like say too much on who he really is. We just know that Why? he lives down here with his mom. He goes to work with her like around 6 p.m. to like maybe 7 or 8 in the morning. And he just been freely walking down the streets. The neighbors stated they believe Janie had one son, Dolph. He was a good kid. All the neighbors knew Dolph because he would always kind of roam around the street trying to hang out with them. Sometimes they would play like card games in the garage with Dolph. Yeah. They really liked him. He was very sweet, very, very kind. But one thing that they constantly noticed about Dolph was that he seemed to just never really be in like a sober state of mind. He was harmless, don't get me wrong. He had a good heart. They knew that. Mm -hmm. But they said, you know, when he talked, he didn't really talk too much. We just knew that he lived down the street with his mom. He went to work with her and he would just kind of roam around the neighborhood. Mm. Another neighbor stated, every time I saw him, he was always high. I mean, he was like never sober. He would talk about mushrooms and would smoke marijuana. I mean, you could tell that there was something off. When he came to my house and his mother called him, he didn't answer. Actually, to me, if I'm being honest... The mom always seemed a little bit weird. Like, I always avoided talking to the mom. Anytime they talked to Dolph or hung out with him, Janie, the mom, would come over and offer to take the neighbors out to dinner or give them, like, a little monetary gift for hanging out with her son. So everyone just thought maybe the son really has no friends and the mom wants to encourage, like, him being social with the neighbors by uh -huh. rewarding the neighbors or something. Sometimes Janie would even text them looking for her son. She would text them things like, hey, Rocky, can you give me a call back, please? It's Dolph's mom. Thank you. But now neighbors are seeing on the news that Rudy, who had been missing for eight years, was found, but they knew him as Dolph. That was Dolph, and they were not losing their minds, okay? Yeah. Another very suspicious thing to note is that once Dolph became Rudy on the news again and came back home, Janie would visit each of the neighbors that had ever seen or ever talked to Dolph over the years and ask them to please don't talk to the media. Oh my god, what bro, is going on? Bro, what so if Dolph is Rudy and Rudy is Dolph, that means he has been living at his mother's house for the entire time that he has been, quote, missing. He was never missing. He was his never mother missing. knew where he was the entire time. So who in the world is his mom? Who does stuff like that? Because, mind you, for the past eight years that he's been, quote, she's missing, been she's these... been on true crime forums, Thank she's been you, talking Rod to Mango. news stations, she's been having up. these rallies Rod with Mango the community. Like, so what? let's get into Janie Santana. I mean, clearly something is very wrong with her, to put it very nicely. I knew from the um, jump. Do you guys remember Charles, the brother that passed away? Uncle Jerry. Uh -huh. So his dad was married to Janie. Oh. He said that when they first got married, he was so excited because he had a son from a previous marriage, Charles. Not Uncle, Uncle And Janie Jerry. was coming in with Rudy from a previous marriage. And they were going to be like this one big, happy, extended, blended family. Blended. But just one year into their marriage, he found out that she was already married to somebody else. Actually, married to like five different men. What? At once? Yeah, so she, it's not clear how many at once, but it could be potentially up to five. She had that? Which is against the law, because, yeah, it's against the law. It's against the law to marry five though. people? I guess she just never went through with divorces. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, so she's, that actually she's makes just sense. like getting married, doing like getting divorced, and then would just get remarried, and then be married to like two people at the same time. And on top of that, she just generally had very, very messy relationships. She was the type that seemed to kind of, you know, at a first glance, you would think that maybe she's a very caring single mom who yeah, wants no, the best for her son. I did not think but that. But the more you get to know her, she's a lot. 
I could tell in from a distance. In previous marriage, she was fined $43,000 for disorderly conduct during the marriage by the courts. How's that? Indicating she might have been abusive to her previous partners. Oh, but the that's... abuse doesn't seem reserved just for her partners. Allegedly, she was being sued by her siblings for custody over their elderly mother. So Janie's mom was old and needed someone to take care of her. So this is Rudy's grandmother. All her other children were willing to take care of her, but Janie convinced her mom. She was like, Mom, you gotta stay with me. Like, I'm the one that knows you best. We're the closest. All the siblings, they love Janie, but they're upset about it. Yeah. Janie's house is notorious for being absolute filth. Their mom was being forced to sleep on a stinky sofa that was covered in urine. The entire house was coated in like a thick layer of animal feces and pee. Who peed on it? So they it? tried to talk to Janie oh, like, hey, I don't think feces. you're in like the right space. And you don't really want to take care of her. It's just so much of a hassle. Why don't we take mom in? That's disgusting. Janie wouldn't have it. So they filed complaints to the courts that Janie's house was not clean, nor safe, nor habitable for an elderly mother. There were instances where their mom would be taken to the hospital because her bed sores had gone untreated. They told the courts that their sibling Janie was a pathological liar and lies about everything. They also stated that Janie had all of these rooms in the house that they weren't allowed to go into, which made them a little bit nervous. Like, what is she doing in that house? But, you know, they didn't want to invade her privacy. No. Like, if your full-grown adult sibling had rooms that you weren't allowed to go into, it would be weird to kind of, like, knock down the door. I mean, like imagine posting that on Reddit. People would be like, yeah, you're the asshole. Give them <laughs> privacy, right? I ain't gonna lie. If my sister said, don't go in that room, uh, I guess I would respect it, but I would low key go in that room. Like, <laughs> I think it's a little different because I tell my sister everything and she tells me everything. So my curiosity would be doubled. You know what I mean? Like, okay, whatever's in that room gotta be fire. <laughs> What if my sister's like a murderer, bro? Let me, let me ask her. Hey, sis, do you be killing folks? Knowing her though, she probably gonna say yes to something, bro. Like she has a very dark sense of humor. They told the courts that their sibling Janie was a pathological liar and lies about everything. They also stated that Janie had all of these rooms in the house that they weren't allowed to go into, which made them a little bit nervous. Like Man, what is she suspicious. doing in that house? Man, suspicious. But you know, they didn't want to invade her privacy. Like, if your full-grown adult sibling had rooms that you weren't allowed to go into, it would be weird to kind of, like, knock down the door. It would be kind like of weird, Like, yeah. imagine posting just, that on Reddit. People bit. would be like, yeah, you're the asshole. Give them privacy, right? But they, they noted to the court, it just made them uneasy. Yeah. It just felt like Janie wasn't fit to take care of their mother. I mean, animal Janie was also in the crazy. process of filing for bankruptcy. She was fined for a reckless discharge of a firearm, meaning literally her gun went off in public accidentally. And on top of all the time that she spent in court, she spent even more time on Facebook. This is where I think things get pretty enlightening, if you will. Janie was addicted to Facebook, like full on the rush of getting comments, the rush of getting likes on her pictures and videos. I'm going to be honest with you. It is easy to get sucked into it. Like the comment section, it feels like you're interacting with a bunch of people and you just want to scroll and get everyone's opinions on things. Like I love going through the comment sections on these videos and figuring out what everyone thinks about it because I'm true, so fascinated true. and yeah, intrigued. Yeah, yeah. That is, yeah. Janie was into <laughs> it, but she didn't have a lot of people commenting on her stuff. So she would make fake accounts, comment on her photos, and oh have full-blown discussions between, like, five people, but it was just, like, five Janies. What the f***? How did they even find out? Yeah. They just did the research? Yeah. Oh, my God. So she would spend all day on Facebook creating multiple accounts so that she could basically interact with herself. And like, hear me out. She would have her actual Facebook account, then she would make multiple fake ones and they would just all be praising her. <laughs> and she would often <laughs> use her own pictures for the fake accounts, but they would be edited to the point where she was unrecognizable. Then she would use those fake accounts to like her photos. Then she would make another account. Sometimes she would take pictures from not so famous people that were like kind of famous, but not really. And then she would talk to herself again and she just kind of got off on these social media interactions even if it was just with herself bro it's, just... it's a very strange thing to do and that made me a little bit um pensive like i was pondering the idea of social media when i was researching this because i'm like okay there's got to be like two aspects to social media there's the actual interacting with people that people yeah. get off on and then there's the idea of people feeling like you're interacting with people 
Because I feel like, I don't know why she would do that. Is it because she wants people to look at her Facebook and be like, wow, she's got a lot of friends? Hmm. She's got a lot of people that love her? That's a good point. Yeah, maybe. Right? Or is it just... I mean, I can't imagine someone is genuinely like, log out, log in, hee hee, and like having a blast with that. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like she's maybe doing it for other people to see. Right? That's what I was thinking. So a local activist known as... Oh my gosh. Log in, hee hee, and like having a blast with that. (laughs) Yeah. I feel like she's maybe doing it for other people to see. Right? That's what I was thinking. So a local activist known as Grizzly stated she created a family of catfish profiles to support her post because nobody likes her stuff and comments mm. back. So <laughs> she created a lot of fake profiles to circle her. Jody She's got using no this as some no sort motion. of love or personal <laughs> gain, like whatever she needs from this. This is like her little community. She That's also posted crazy. a post on one of these fake accounts saying that she was in Australia on vacation and she used stock photos of people who are on the thinner side and they'd be lounging at the beach and she would pretend that it was her. So she's very much into all these fake personalities and identities that she's creating for herself online. She's very drawn to the attention, even if it's from her own self. To appear like she's getting attention was good enough for her. That's like the height and she's of drawn narcissism, to it like a moth right? to a flame. It seems like she likes drama and attention. That these are kind of like the things that are coming out. And I really hate putting those labels on it, specifically women, because it's like, oh, women just love drama. But I can't think of any other way to describe her. <laughs> there was a very telling incident in Rudy's life when they found out that Rudy had a tumor on his foot. It was not a cancerous tumor. Everyone in the family already knew about this tumor. I don't know how they found out. Maybe he went to his, like, family doctor. They're like, you have a tumor on your foot, but it's fine. Like, we tested it. You're good, right? Mm -hmm. Out of nowhere, Janie is like, all right, Rudy, you're going to walk to the ER and tell them that you took a bunch of pills as an attempt to take your own life. And then say it's because your tumor is cancerous or something. What? And then once he did that, he was admitted. She gets called to the hospital. She runs over. She's taking pictures of him, posting it to Facebook, talking about how he has a cancerous tumor. And she stated emotionally on Facebook that she didn't want to lose the only son that she has. So I think that she, um, I think she was being smart with it. She wanted it to appear as if Rudy had cancer. And in order to be an inpatient I don't think that they were going to inpatient him for just having a tumor on his foot that was non-cancerous. So he said that he attempted to take his own life, which I think there's like a mandatory like 72 hour or 48 hour hold. So he would be inpatient so she could go and snap all these pictures. Wow, come on. This is a legend. That's my <laughs> belief. That's my personal opinion, okay? I'm saying now, that medicine is fat, speculate that mango. Janie had Munchausen by proxy, which what? is when parents often make their children or partners get sick to get attention and sympathy from others. Like, oh my goodness, you're such a great caretaker. I mean, we've heard of so many of these cases yeah. by now. She would just straight up have all these full-blown conversations of like, oh, you're so like strong for this. My goodness, like we're supporting you. But they were from herself too. Yeah. And you know, I think the older that I get, the more amazed I am when a kid is able to be very different from their parents or to even hold different beliefs from their parents. I feel like I'm realizing more and more how big of an influence like environment really is. It's kind of scary to think like how much of our personalities are just conditioned through our environment and we think it's our personality, <laughs> but it's just our environment. Why did she just dissect me like that? What the hell? Excuse me. <laughs> Oh my God, how much of my personality is from my environment, bro? So what part of myself is really me? And what part of myself is the result of the shit that I've seen or the shit that I've been around or or been through? All right, existential crisis over. (laughs) Oh my God, I go through that at least like twice a day. I ain't gonna cap to you, you get used to it. Conditioned through our environment and we think it's our personality, but it's just our environment, right? Rudy was alone with Janie. Like Janie was constantly getting a new husband, new husband, new husband. She's after, she's foaming at the mouth for drama and attention, in my opinion. And Rudy was nothing like his mom. He was just kind of like this nurturing, soft person. It's so interesting. That's that's how people describe him, you know? He didn't really get to spend time with his biological dad or he didn't really have any siblings he was close with. He just had his mom. She was his primary guardian. Rudy was the type of person that would see a stray cat on the road and just spend the entire day trying to get that little kitty inside the house. And he wouldn't even post about it on Facebook. He just wanted to take care of people. He wanted to take care of things. 
but he was also really, really shy. He's very gentle, but very quiet, reserved. There was just one person that would bring him out of his shell, his beloved stepbrother, Charles. So Janie, at one point, when Rudy was younger, had gotten remarried to a guy that already had a son, Charles, like I was mentioning, remember? Mm -hmm. Charles was eight years older than Rudy. So both parents, they were concerned. Janie and the stepdad were worried. You know, what if the boys don't get along? They have got an eight-year age gap. What if they freaking hate each other? Mm Mm-hmm. Rudy falls in love with Charles the minute that they meet. He sees Charles as this older brother father figure that he never had, that he had been desperately craving. And everything Charles did, Rudy wanted to do. Charles has plans to go join the Marines. Rudy has plans to go join the Marines. Like he just looked up to him so, so much. And then one day, Janie and Rudy are home and Janie gets a call. She starts panicking and she tells Rudy, put on your clothes, we gotta go, we gotta go. Charles had gotten into a motorcycle accident at an intersection near their house when he was coming home. Janie and Charles ran out. They were there at the intersection before any paramedics even arrived, which I'm not sure was a good thing or not, because Rudy could see Charles laying there. His his brother, his father figure, his best friend is laying there, losing so much blood he was barely breathing. At just 13 years old, Rudy saw his big brother die on the side of the road. He watched Charles take his last breath right there on the streets of Houston. And I imagine this was incredibly traumatic. I mean, at 13, I'm kind of amazed at how well Rudy analyzed and expressed his grief. He went onto Facebook on the first anniversary of his brother's death. And he's, he wrote, Brother, today is officially one year since the day you left to be with the Lord. I still miss you as much as I did then, if not more. You showed me so many things when you were here. My regret is not telling you that I loved you before you left. I wish God would just grant me one wish, and I would use that wish to bring you back. I wish I could ride with you through the open roads of the woods, and I just couldn't have asked for a better dad and a father figure. He's 14 when he wrote this. Like, I can't believe how mature and thoughtful this post was. And then three years after Charles's passing, Rudy's biological father passed away. Rudy was 16 years old, and Rudy's dad was found in a parking garage in his patrol car, in his police patrol car, with his police-issued pistol and a self-inflicted bullet wound to his head. Um. Okay, so let me explain. Rudy's biological dad was a police officer. Well, not anymore. At the time that he died, he actually was fired from his position the day of his death. A couple months before his death, right? Higher up police officers caught a whiff of something fishy going on in their police force. There were an overwhelming number of speeding tickets issued by officers who seemed to be able to like split their bodies in two. Early February, Rudy's dad issued a speeding ticket on the Katy Freeway. Seven miles away at the exact same time, Rudy's dad was issuing another speeding ticket. So unless he was able to split his body into two, something he never told the police force about, Or there was something fishy going on. Yeah. It was clear he was writing up false traffic tickets. But the question is why, right? Like, what is the reason? Back then, and I don't know if it is still now, and I don't know how many different police departments do this, but certain police departments, they basically pay their police officers commission on speeding tickets. Think of it like that. So they get paid based on the number of tickets that they write. This Probably has, I think, been since changed at most police departments to like no. a regular clock in, clock out system to get a. Nah, I don't think it's been changed, bro. Oh my God. Rudy's story hits way too close to home. Based on the number of tickets that they write. This probably has, I think, been since changed at most police departments to like a regular clock in, clock out system to get overtime. But the more tickets equals the more overtime pay. Mm. Rudy's father was one of the three officers at this particular department doing this. He did this for three years and made more than $150,000 in fake overtime. Collectively, the three of them wrote more than 5,000 bogus tickets and fined random citizens a total of $350,000. So thankfully, after this comes to light, those tickets were thrown out. But Rudy's dad was fired from his position. What about the money? He had to his badge and his gun. You fined those citizens. But instead, he walked out of the court that day went to the patrol car, and took his own life. Now, Rudy wasn't that close with his biological dad. He was not present in Rudy. Should he not have been sent to jail, though? Like, I, I, don't, I don't understand, bro. Like, Out of the court that day. Is that not illegal? Went to the illegal? patrol car and took his own life. 
Now, Rudy wasn't that close with his biological dad. He was not present in Rudy's life after he and Janie broke up, but it took a really big toll on Rudy. It seems like even Rudy was surprised by the amount of emotions that he was feeling after finding out about all of this. He wrote on Facebook, even though I didn't really know him, it still hurt to lose him. I mean, maybe because I know I'm never going to get the chance to have that father-son relationship with him that I always wanted and get the closure that I always needed. Honestly, I didn't expect to feel anything for him when I got the news that he died, but I did. I didn't realize there were feelings I had, and I think these feelings were a mixture from shock to hurt to sad to anger to numbness and more anger and just, I don't know, so many mixed feelings. He's a very, very insightful kid. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Like, 100%. even the way that he's able to grasp... So logical, too, the yeah. way that he breaks it down. And the way that he articulates his feelings of, like, I didn't expect to feel these feelings, you know? Mm -hmm. When I lost my sister, bro, I was just mad, furious. I wasn't able to express anything other than anger. And that anger started leaning towards hate at one point. It's so interesting to see someone who's gone through a similar situation, but the way they dealt with it, much more logical than the way I dealt with it. So logical too, the yeah. way that he breaks it down. And the way that he articulates his feelings of like, I didn't expect to feel these feelings, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good at communicating. Now, Rudy was 16 when his dad passed. The combined death of his brother and his father in such a short amount of time, I mean, it definitely took a toll on him. Yeah. His cousin stated that at 17 years old, he, and I don't know how to describe this. They say that he had the mental age of a 10 year old. I, I don't know if I believe that because of the Facebook posts, but I think they meant his innocence is kind of what I'm getting. So the way that they describe it is he's so warm, so kind, so sweet, but he had this childhood naiveness about him. That, that a manner of thinking that most children grow out of during teenagehood. Like, you know, when you're a teenager, you're like a menace to society. Everyone is. <laughs> but he just had that childhood innocence about him. It seemed like maybe the trauma actually made him feel even more shy, more reserved. It did feel like he had some sort of depression, PTSD, and or anxiety. And then Rudy went missing. And then for the next eight years... Janie would tell the story. This nigga Rudy what has if not caught after a break, was bro. To eat dinner and then walk the two dogs. You, you know, usually it takes 15 minutes for them to do their business, but 15 minutes turned into two hours and three hours, and I'm pacing around the house trying to suppress the, you know, the motherly panic when you start to. I was reasoning with myself, you know, maybe he ran into a friend, he got distracted. But then Janie heard a bark at the door. Instead of her son and two dogs, there was one dog with the leash dangling behind oh, it. Bro, bro. The dog found its way home. Janie said she was actually less nervous now. She thought, okay, maybe while Rudy was walking the dogs, he let go of the leashes and they ran about. And so he was chasing, maybe he's chasing after the other one right now. And this one found its way home. He's going to turn up soon. She waited. There was another bark at the door. Bruh, her other dog. She is By the morning, cabin. both dogs were home, but Rudy was gone. She called the police, who didn't seem that interested in searching for Rudy. Technically, he was 17, and they considered him basically an adult, which you're like, what? Basic adult is 18. He's seven months shy of 18. And 17 is the age of consent in Texas, so like, no, he's not a minor. Are the police just heartless? Well, not really. Apparently, Janie gave them the wrong birth date when she initially reported him missing. It's unclear which birthday she gave, but that could potentially explain why the police believed him to be an adult when he went missing, at least briefly. She Janie did that on also purpose. told officers that Rudy had a tumor. Oh my God, she did that on purpose so that the police wouldn't actually search heavily and make it a big deal, bro. Yo, she, how is she free? No, 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 no. Why is she not in jail? Janie also told officers that Rudy had a tumor on his foot that made it very hard for him to walk, and he was struggling with his mental health. Officers searched the area that Rudy had gone missing. They found a backpack with notebooks and an asthma inhaler, and Janie confirmed it to be Rudy's. Which, this, this is changing things. If Rudy ran away, like the police initially thought, why would he have left his backpack and his inhaler in it? Starting to look like a kidnapping. Now Rudy was classified as a missing persons case, and Janie went and just went into like missing mom mode, okay? She's printing out posters of Rudy and putting them up everywhere in town. She's getting the police involved, family members, friends, the entire community is putting up these posters. Everyone felt for Janie. 
first her stepson Charles dies, then her former husband dies, oh, and now her other son is missing all in less than five years. Is eating that up. They want to help? Especially after they heard Janie tell the story of how Rudy went missing. Of course they want to help. They couldn't believe it. I mean, just a young kid walking the family dogs goes missing. It's shocking. This is clout. But it is. She's just looking just for clout. a story, isn't it? Oh my God. So the case goes cold slowly. Officers who are working on Rudy's case, they get transferred. They start working on different cases. They retire. They get fired. Yeah. And the community also kind of moved on. I mean, there was such little information to even go off of. Nobody would even have any clue in which general direction to even search for Rudy. Mm -hmm. The only one that was interested in looking for Rudy was good old Janie. She started a GoFundMe page for her son. And she wrote, it has been so long and Rudy is still missing. Please help us find Rudy. The community came together and donated over $2,000 to find her son. The detectives continued searching, but they told Dateline NBC, we don't really suspect any foul play. What? There's nothing to indicate that he had gone missing. Really? Yeah, the backpack, they, they say that they couldn't even be really sure that that's Rudy's backpack. All they got was the mother's confirmation. Yeah, and the investigation fizzled out. And for years, Janie was active on true crime forums, posting about her son. She even stated that she was worried for her own safety. She stated the police hinted at her that human traffickers were involved, which, like, side note, goes against what the police have just stated publicly, that there was no foul play suspected. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes they withhold that information from the general public, but just noting the discrepancy there. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. maybe Janie knew best. Right. Oh, she did. Before Rudy was found, Janie started asking around about when the least busy time was at the U.S.-Mexico border. She stated that she wanted to take a trip down to the border town Reynosa, and she stated that she knew without a shadow of doubt that Rudy had been human trafficked and smuggled across the border into Mexico. She was going to go down there, movie taken style, and get her son <laughs> back. She Shutty. talked to her friends, like this is like a Mission Impossible mission. She was going to go undercover. I mean, she would do whatever it takes. She would go undercover to get these traffickers, to get them to trust her. She would fight tooth and nail to get her son back. Even if she has to pose as a customer, as a human trafficker herself, she was going to do whatever it took. I mean, she was like really hyping it up. <laughs> Yo, she was painting cool. a picture of how dangerous and how terrifying this mission was going to be. And everyone was like, really? Reynosa? Like, what? It's a pretty chill town. It's like being like, I'm going to go into the dirty streets of San Diego. <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, that's not really what I know San Diego to be about. Yeah. Reynosa and a lot of Mexico is not a drug war zone, like how often the media in the U.S. likes to portray know, Mexico. I know, Reynosa is pretty Reynosa is just a town with a ton of kids, shops, universities. It's actually a pretty good tourist town. Yeah. It's like a normal town. And of course, there's probably human trafficking there. I mean, there's human trafficking presence in every major and mid-sized city around the world, especially near country borders. But going to Reynosa is not really like this dangerous mission that Janie is like hyping it More up like to be. like a stroll down the but park. Uh, like. she starts a whole fundraiser to fund her trip. People were going to come together and make donations, hear his story, and give support. It was supposed to help bring Rudy home. In reality, Janie didn't seem that invested. So the rest of the family, Rudy's cousins, aunts, uncles, they had pooled all their money together and actually hired two private investigators that showed up at the fundraiser. And the two PIs, they're pretty observant. Everyone else is, you know, we're normal people. We're like in our heads. We're okay. Well, I'm, I'm stressed but about this that's going on in trained. my life. And I'm not really focusing on other people right now. These two PIs, they're, they're like detectives. Right. They said, you know, it was weird. At the fundraiser, Janie showed up late. She didn't go around and say hello to any of the people who were donating money or anyone who was at the fundraiser. And remember how she said she knew which human trafficker took Rudy? How she knew that? Well, the private investigators obviously were interested in this. And they were like, hey, you got to tell us the name. You got to tell us that we can't help you. We're literally being paid to help you. So let us help you. How she know that? She hesitantly probably gave them a name. And they actually tracked that person down, called them, and this alleged human trafficker already knew Rudy's mom. And she stated, I told Janie I didn't want to be involved in her scam. And then they hung up. Very strange. Then on a different occasion, Janie sent this investigator receipts of conversations that she allegedly had with Rudy's traffickers. Now, the thing is, she told the PIs that these traffickers were located in Tijuana, Mexico. The type of Spanish in the alleged conversation is the wrong dialect for someone from Mexico. Okay, this is kind of crazy, right? 
And the thing about Spanish is that there's literally an entire world of different dialects. Right. That's, there's this interesting phenomenon that's actually happening right now in border states between Mexico and the U.S. and inside of the U.S. where Spanish is changing. It's called Chicano Spanish or Spanglish or Tex-Mex Spanish. It's Valley Spanish, some people say. It's got a ton of different names. It's basically Spanish mixed with English. So it's not like... I'm speaking Spanish and then throwing in English words. But mm. the English construction of a sentence is uh. used and replaced by Spanish. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, like, in Korea, it could be like... Yeah, it's like grammar is changing a little like bit. Like, in Korean, it would be, you over there go, is the construction of the sentence. And then in English, it'd be, go over there. Mm -hmm. But in you know what I mean? So it would be that English construction of the sentence, but replaced so with Spanish. interesting. There are also a lot of words that are kind of... Not made up, but um, not really said a lot in Mexico that's used with a lot of second or third generation immigrants from Mexico that now reside in the U.S. It's on its way to becoming like classified as its own language. That's so cool. So the text cool. messages between Janie and the traffickers showed Chicano Spanish both ways. And the PIs kind of raised their eyebrows. Like, sure, it's a possibility that people in Mexico can speak a dialect that's mostly found in the U.S. But fun fact, this dialect, Chicano Spanish, is typically looked down upon by people in Mexico. I had a feeling, They yeah. call Chicano speakers no sabo. Or like no sabo kids kids who don't know quote real spanish there's yeah. almost a pride in mexico of like oh you're not really from mexico because yeah, you're not using the correct so it's not terms. a desirable dialect to speak if you reside in mexico and she said that these traffickers were from tijuana so but guess who knows chicano spanish and guess who speaks chicano spanish Janie. laney oh, oh that's Janie. her language yeah Oh uh, yeah, she's an immigrant residing in the U.S. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense for her side of the text to be that dialect, but the alleged traffickers ain't also no way speak she, Chicano Spanish. She used her own culture. It's just culture something interesting to note. As a and way besides to besides that, Janie and the alleged trafficking. a lot. Like using your own culture as a way to continue this lie is just like there's no. I knew she had no self respect, but. <sighs> You willing to do that to your own son? I don't know why I'm even surprised, bro. And besides that, Janie and the alleged traffickers had the same manner of speaking. <laughs> like the same way of punctuating. Oh my god. And the PI speculated that Janie just really wanted to go to Reynosa for a little vacation, but she wanted the public to pay for it, so she used Rudy as an excuse for the fundraiser. That's even that's like crazy. Okay, so to get it straight, the whole family was like, okay, let's help her now. Yeah. So they hired two investigators. And these two investigators is investigating the shit out of her. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. And she's basically dig digging her own own uh, grave now. Yes. But I think the family doesn't know that because the investigators, I think they were trying to hint it to the other family members that hired them. Uh -huh. But it's very hard to be like, hey, I think your sister is lying about this <laughs> without any proof. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, because these are all kind of like, oh, I don't want to say it. I know we're both thinking it, but like, I don't want to be the one to say it. Yeah. 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 One month later, she reports to the police that she was robbed and carjacked by an unknown subject who fled to Mexico. She doesn't even say how she knew they went to Mexico with her car. She said that she was robbed by, and I quote, an illegal. And that left such a sour, awful taste in people's mouths. I mean, she's from this community. Say, Most of the people supporting her and supporting her cause were people that lived in the area. I and they felt like, you know what? what Maybe Rudy is illegal. not being found because he's not a white kid. Like we as immigrants, we need to stick together. None of these people were rich. Like this is not the socioeconomic community where they're just pouring in money to GoFundMe's. They didn't have a lot of disposable income. Uh -huh. A lot of them had family from Mexico, just like Cheney has family from Mexico. I mean, she should understand how hurtful it is to call someone an illegal and accuse them of a crime, but she still did it. And remember how Janie's siblings sued her to get custody of their mother? Yeah. So it sounds like all of her siblings hate her, right? That's not really the case. They still really cared for Janie. They just also really cared for their mother. Whenever yeah. Janie got a call of a reported sighting of Rudy, it didn't matter where in the country it was. The siblings would drive her for days. One time they took her from Texas, Houston, Texas, and drove her all the way to California. 
because they got an anonymous tip that Rudy was seen in California. How much? They would take days off work. They would leave their families, leave their bills, leave their responsibilities to get Janie to California to see if that was her son. And it was never Rudy. You got to respect that shit, bro. After each failed attempt to find Rudy, Janie would post onto Facebook. And she once posted... Rudy Farias, I know God and Big Brother Charles are both watching over you wherever you are. I ask them to every single night. I ask that they shield you and protect you wherever you are and keep you safe until we can find you and bring you home. Where could you possibly be? I miss your morning kisses and your everyday funny pranks. I just miss you, period. Oh, yeah? Your room is empty and cold, as you once described your brother's room when he passed away. Empty and cold. That empty feeling I never wanted to feel again after losing your brother. But here I am with that emptiness once again, so please find your way back home to me emptiness. and fill this empty void that I'm feeling. Empty! Side note, <laughs> Janie references losing her other son a lot, and while she was Charles's stepmom, and I know stepmoms can be very involved and can be just like a regular mom, like a biological mom to their children, Yeah. Janie and Charles allegedly weren't close at all. I feel it, bro. Like, allegedly, like, Janie didn't really care for Charles like once that. Once you started and then that he died. sentence, I'm and like... And after he died, suddenly it was like, my son, my son, I'm grieving my son. Oh, you my were my son. everything, my son. I love you so anyway, much, my son. Anyway, her post continued. I can't do this anymore. You are all I have left. Did Please find your way again? home. At the time she wrote and posted this Facebook post, Rudy was in her house being held prisoner behind a locked door. Like, what? It seems like he was held captive in that room for eight years. Explain the bruises. Rudy would later state that he was never chained up or physically held captive, but he was mentally held captive. Mm. Eight years ago, when he was 17 years old, he had gotten fed up with how he was being treated at home. He felt underappreciated. He felt a lack of respect. He said his mother never respected his boundaries and he just wanted to live his own life. Yeah. So he ran away at 17. He ran away. Oh. He came back the very next day. He wasn't gone for like, 24 hours even. Yeah. Nobody saw him come back except his mom. He walked in through the door, probably expecting to apologize and be like, okay, I couldn't do it. I'm 17. I can't even get a job, right? But Janie told him, you need to go into hiding. What? What? The police are looking for you, Rudy. You're a wanted man now. For what? You had gotten a speeding ticket a few days ago, and because I already reported you missing, I mean, the police think that you're running from the law, running away from the speeding ticket. You're an outlaw. The police are looking for you, and when they find you, they're going to throw you in jail for running away. Rudy Mm. genuinely believed her. I mean, keep in mind that his family said that at the age of 17, his mental age was closer to 10. And this was his mother. So he didn't expect that she would ever lie. Yeah. So he stayed hidden in his room for the first day, and then the first day turned into like a week, and then a year, and then his mother had everything worked out. She had thoroughly brainwashed him. (laughs) Anytime anyone would come over, he would go into the room, lock the door, and stay deathly silent. The only people who knew he was home was his mother and his grandmother, Rosa. I mean... That's it. She tried to tell her the rest of the kids, so Rudy's aunts and uncles, that Rudy was in that room. But every single time, and Rudy heard all of this. What? Yeah, he's in the room, listening to his family talk, laugh together, and then randomly his grandmother would be like, Rudy's in that room. He desperately wanted to do something, but he couldn't. His mom convinced him that if anyone knew that he was home, the police would find out and he would go to jail. So why does she bring her mom to the house too? Oh, I, some people suspect that she was getting checks from the government oh, okay. if she was the caretaker. Oh, I see. Yeah. So after the That's case had died down enough, she allowed him to go outside to visit the neighbors once in a while. Only so long that he used the name Dolph instead of Rudy. She also took him to work with her. She worked as a like an overnight security job. So all she did is do some paperwork and kind of sit there. And he, she forced him to do all the paperwork. Basically, anything in the job that she didn't want to do, he was doing it. And when he wasn't doing her job for her, she would toss him her credit card and have him go buy the groceries, do some errands. I mean, this is incredibly ballsy. Yeah. Yeah. Allegedly, according to a source that spoke with Rudy after he was found, they stated Rudy had suffered physical and mental abuse at the hands of his mother. They alleged that during the eight years, Janie would drug Rudy punish him by locking him in his room like a prison. She threatened and taunted him that he was going to go to prison, and she convinced him that he was in a lot of trouble. She kept him drugged up, allegedly, so that he couldn't think for himself. There are also allegations of essay during this time that are hotly debated online. An activist who spoke with Rudy alleged that Rudy told him that his mother would 
come into the bathroom when he was showering, force him to bathe her. Sometimes she would just stare at him while he showered. The activist also claimed Rudy stated that Janie forced Rudy under the covers with her without any clothes on. Um, and it sounds like Rudy didn't say this. It Rudy did say these things, but the part that is hotly debated is some people are interpreting that as clear abuse. Other people are interpreting it as he didn't explicitly say. In fact, Rudy actually would later deny abuse was involved. But to some people, this is abuse, you know. So the activist Kinda, believes 100% without a doubt like. that there was some sort of abuse going it on. It just feels wrong. This went but... on for about eight years. But Janie is no mastermind. It's not like she pulled off the most meticulous plan for eight years long. We actually have a strange time period called the Rudy sightings. In 2018, Rudy's cousin Cassandra called the police and she said the weirdest thing had just happened. I think I just saw my cousin and my cousin is missing. Mm. But I went back to check and now he's gone. Okay, Cassandra, where did you see him? Oh, near my aunt's house. His mom's house. The police would go to check. They didn't have a warrant, so they would ask Janie if they could take a look around, and she would let them. Now, typically with warrants, or the lack of a warrant, I guess, is they don't really dig too much. Like, they don't go through your cabinets. They don't go through your drawers. In fact, if a door is closed, typically the police will ask you, can I open that door? because mm -hmm. they don't have a warrant they don't have to forcibly open everything and uh there was one door that was closed it was at the end of the hallway and they asked can we open the door and she said oh i'd rather you not since they didn't have a search warrant they couldn't force her to open the door the house was quiet and orderly oh. she was being generally helpful they didn't feel like anything was suspicious that's i mean suspicious, who knows what's behind though. the door maybe it's just like a bunch of her underwear that's hanging in plain sight after she did laundry Either way, the police leave and chalk the sighting up as a false lead until it happened again. This time it happened when Janie was in the car. She was stopped by the traffic police for a minor traffic offense. She was let off with a warning and the police asked for her name and for the name of the guy in the passenger seat. She said her name was Judy, not Janie. And she told the officers that the guy in the passenger seat was her nephew, Raphael. They didn't even run her license plate because the traffic offense was so minor. Wow. There were a few more sightings of Rudy all around his house or in his neighborhood, but each time the police investigated, Janie said that it was just a nephew of hers that looked so similar to Rudy. But the police were kind of confused at the time because most of the sightings of Rudy were reported by Rudy's family members, mm. like his cousin Cassandra, the neighbors, the passerbys. That's explainable, you know? If a neighbor is like, hmm, I think I saw this guy on a missing poster, right? It's explainable. Maybe there's a lot of strong genes in the family. Okay, was that not enough but to get a family warrant, members, bro? Like, how likely are you to mistake one cousin for another and be so convinced that one cousin is the other that you immediately call the police? These family members must be losing their mind for years. Yes, oh. and Janie is, like, master manipulating them the whole time. Yes. And they're so, like, my like, heart Even if they them. have suspicions. Yes. And then it's like... Is it true? Is it possible? Is it not possible? They must be losing their lie. mind. That's and then fact, you have though, to like... also consider when you are accusing someone of something so heinous, yeah. you start talking yourself out of it and you're like, am I horrible for thinking that even? No. Am I horrible no. for even thinking that she's capable of doing something so bad? And mm -hmm. then you uh, come to find out that you are right. And you could have... Oh. Then you probably will feel shitty. Yeah. yeah they... You should have done something, right? <laughs> they feel a lot of guilt. Yeah. Yeah. Even Rosa, Rudy's grandmother who had dementia, she would constantly, you know, point and Janie would say, oh my God, ignore her, guys. She probably is just missing Rudy, that's all. Yeah. Netizens speculate that the police didn't care too much about these alleged sightings because either A, Rudy is an adult at this point, or B, because of Rudy's socioeconomic status. Now, after eight years, Rudy had this plan. He waited until the middle of the night, stole his mom's car keys. This is when he is found again, right? After eight years. He's been living like this for eight years, going as Dolph, doing his mom's job, not able to leave the house unless his mom warranted it. Like, it, it was a lot. Mm -hmm. So he's like, I gotta escape. He stole his mom's car keys, credit card, drove away from the house. Now, from what we know now, he didn't have any other destination except for going away. Like, he just wanted to get away. He got a couple minutes away before he crashed the car. Oh. It had been eight years since he drove a car. 
Oh, yeah. Okay. Every so sense. often, his mom would let him drive the car around, but very rarely. He wasn't used to it. He crashed it. That's how he got majority of the cuts and bruises. Mm-hmm. He left the keys in the car and continued on foot. He said he wandered around without much direction. And at one point, he appeared in front of a church. And uh, that's where he was found. Aww. And he was, quote, reunited with his family. Now, remember the picture of Rudy in the hospital after he was found? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Rudy's family immediately recognized that photo from eight years ago. Apparently, Janie had posted the same photo eight years ago when Rudy was hospitalized for the tumor on his foot. Remember? Oh it's my- not even a recent photo. What the hell? And the whole nation was like, oh my God, Rudy's been found and he's in the hospital right now. Really? We don't like- even know if he went to the hospital. It, <laughs> side note, she went to the church to be joined with Rudy and authorities would later come out and say that they were trying to rush Rudy to the hospital, but Janie kept saying, no, 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 he doesn't want to go to the hospital. So they just thought, okay, maybe like he's too scared to be in a hospital right now. Maybe mother knows best, right? So the family was very vocal about dis- this discrepancy online. So the family is all turning on Janie. Hold on, They're hold trying on. to be behind Rudy. If the story ends and Rudy is still with his mom, bro, mom, I'm probably going like, I don't know, I might lose it. I might lose it, bro. See online. So the family is all turning on Janie. They're trying to be behind Rudy. They're turning on Janie 100%. And there were a lot of speculations because the family is now suddenly turning on the mom. Netizens were bringing up like, ooh, maybe there's some doubt on this story. After Rudy was found, Janie made a Facebook account by the name Citizens of the Net. Oh my God. I'm I'm a netizen. Why that sound kind of crazy coming from me though, like. It sounds so much better coming from her when I say it. It sounds like a beast. <laughs> hey, yeah, you got netizen, cuz. Family is now suddenly turning on the mom. Netizens were bringing up like, ooh, maybe there's some doubt on this story. After Rudy was found, Janie made a Facebook account by the name of um, Beos Niños, meaning beautiful children. And she posted as if it was like a fan page for her and her children but she never posted about about rudy is weird yeah and then in another post janie is pretending to be a news tiktok account and she posted coming from estranged family members of the sanchez family the family had come for janie before rosa their mother passed away it was a nasty court battle but because janie prevailed they had since been seeking revenge by slander and defamation basically saying all the family members that are now casting doubt on Rudy's story after Rudy has been found. They're all doing this because they hate Janie because Janie won custody of their mom in court. Bro, she it's is... It's not because there's actual holes in the story. It's because sick. they're revengeful. They're vengeful people. She is sick, bro. After Rudy was found, Janie continued to have full-blown conversations with herself online. She would use fake accounts to comment things on her own posts like, this must be so hard for you, sending you strength and love during this difficult time. Then she... I wonder if it's... You know, fake account, you click on it, there's nothing on their page. Yes. Yeah. So there's like people they have not suspicious? Nothing, they've commented on nothing else but your post. Yes. Yes. That's immediately like, suspicious. So fake. Yes. You're like, you literally made this account to do this right now. Yeah. Then she would log out, turn around, sign into another account and go, same here. I can't imagine going oh, through what you're going through. Good wishes God. to you and your family. Wow. Then she would sign into her account and comment... Thank you. Your support really means a lot. <laughs> Sorry. So it's not funny. It's like so oyopso. You know the Korean saying. It's like so ridiculous. I have oyopso. no other reaction, right? I like that. Then she would use another account to make another post. Oyopso. She posted a selfie of herself, but it was coming from like someone else's account speaking for her and then captioned it. This is from Rudy Farias' mother, Janie Alexis Santana. These bitches need to shut their traps it's sad when you need to attack people during a crisis just for followers clout and popularity if anyone is following those hoes either on facebook tiktok or any other social media you will be blocked from here and all posts will be private for friends and family only we don't need the bullshit and negativity either you support Janie and rudy or you don't and if you don't then get the fuck out and delete your ass off our pages or i'll find out who you are and i'll do it for you and you won't see shit moving forward i'm not the one boo what the? So that was coming from her pretending to be a fan. Yeah. Oh, yup, so. Yikes. So there's a lot going on, but netizens are a little confused on why she even did this. You know, as this is unfolding, 
They said, you got your son back after eight years, you know, just give it up. Like, don't be doing all of this. Just focus on your family. Like, who I'm cares saying. about the haters on TikTok? Right. And uh, now oh, so. Janie is suing one of her sisters for defamation and slander. Mm -hmm. Janie's siblings and her nephews and nieces have come forward and said, Janie needs to be brought in. They're not going to know what the hell she's really done if they don't bring her in and put pressure on her to talk. They're covering up what they knew years ago, and they don't want to come forward. Hold on. Another aunt said she hid this. That was awful and wrong. For what she did to him, that girl needs to go to jail. Rudy's other aunt, Sylvia, said, I have not seen him since the day he went missing. Over the years, I even went out of state with Janie to help look for him. She had me out here in California thinking that someone had found someone that looked like Rudy in California, and I went all the way there with her. Is Rudy still with her? His aunt Patricia said, how could you do that to your own kid? And I bet you it was Janie who threw him out there and beat him up by that church to be found. The family is also kind of upset with the police. They believe the police didn't do enough during the years to f try and find him. I mean, they literally came face to face with Rudy during a traffic stop and didn't notice anything. That's On July crazy. 5th, Rudy was finally ready to talk. Except the only person that he was willing to talk to wasn't the police, but it was a local activist by the name of Quanell X. Quanell was the leader of the new Black Panther movement in Houston. He is an activist advocate for victims of discrimination, police violence, wrongful termination, and more. He helps people get media coverage for their cases and negotiates with law enforcement on their behalf. He is not a lawyer. He is just an activist. And when I say just, I don't mean like just an activist, but you get it. He's not a yeah, lawyer. Yeah. He's not no, a police officer. I see what you're saying. Now, Jamie Mangle. called him and he asked if he would speak with her son. Or maybe you and do. Rudy also know. agreed to speak with him. I hope so. He said, Wait, Janie called? Yeah. What? <laughs> And uh, Quanell got the call out and he rushed over. Rudy didn't want to talk to the police and he hadn't talked to he hadn't talked to the police since he had been quote found. Now Quanell asked if Rudy minded if police sat Bro, in on their conversation. Fat booty Rudy didn't have to talk men. to the police. He didn't have to answer their questions, but they would just be there to listen. And he agreed. I didn't mean the men at fat booties the cameras were just they're, they're just big cameras like fat booty cameras bro <laughs> oh my god <laughs> and rudy also agreed to speak with him he said Wait, janie called yeah and uh, Quanell got the call out and he rushed over. Rudy didn't want to talk to the These police and he hadn't talked to cameras, he hadn't like... talked to the police since he had been quote found. Now Quanell asked if Rudy minded if police sat in on their conversation. Rudy didn't have to talk to the police. He didn't have to answer their questions, but they would just be there to listen and he agreed. Now Janie was originally in that motel room, like that hotel room while they're having this conversation. But every time he would try to talk, she would kind of like put pressure on him to shut up or she would give him a look or she would like put his hand, put her hand on him. She was very hesitant. So they asked her to leave the room and then she was like, okay, fine, but he needs me because he might have a panic attack. They're like, just, just leave the room. Yeah. Five minutes later, the door would burst open and she'd be like, is my baby okay? Is my baby doing okay? You can't force him to talk. He's going to have a panic attack. And then she would burst in the room again two minutes later. Like, Rudy, Rudy, are you okay? Are they putting pressure on you? Oh, my gosh, It seems lady. like she's scared of him saying something. Yeah, just, just. Eventually, they would get an hour alone with Rudy. And Quanell would come out of it. And there were news reporters all outside the hotel waiting for this moment. And he told them there was definitely abuse. No doubt about it. When he started telling me this, I couldn't believe it. I sat there trying to hold back my tears to be strong for him because I didn't want him to see that. The most sacred thing to a young man is his mama, but to hear what she did to her son, she's the damn devil. She convinced him to use a fake name and told him to really believe that, that that was his name. And with a lot of drugs, it worked. This boy was abused big time with drugs, along with what I believe is abuse based on what he said to us. The boy was mentally tortured and physically. That was a house of hell. Damn. Apparently, Rudy told him that he was forced to, quote, play husband during his time in captivity. Quanell told interviewers that Rudy had cut marks all over his forearms like razor marks. He also had some on top of his chest, which were later identified as self-harm marks. Rudy told Quanell, I just want to be free. I'm tired of living like a slave. I feel like a slave. Damn. Quanell told the media, I want his mother to pay for the crimes that she's committed. Based on what that boy told me, I don't see why she's not in handcuffs right now. He was petrified by the, but the minute that he was by himself, he calmed down. The minute that she left the room, he calmed down. Mm. I believe she was drugging the hell out of that kid. He said he didn't like getting into the bed with her, that he would try to sneak out of the bed, but she told him he, he had to be her husband. 
the police did not arrest Janie. I don't know why. Even if they can't use Rudy's story, which I think they can since there were officers present, they had enough evidence to charge her with something. I mean, she falsely led police to believe that Rudy was missing for eight whole years. What there must mean? have been you know. some sort of obstruction of investigations, like anything like that. Obstruction of justice. Nothing. Yes. Child Rudy endangerment. Rudy went home with his mom that Child very abuse. night. Oh, wait, he wasn't yeah. a kid. Oh. And uh, before they left, she actually pulled him aside and said, tell them you made it all up and that it was all a lie. If you tell them the truth, I will kill myself. She thought she was out of range from the media's mics, but she had no idea she was being recorded. No way. Yeah. She said, if you tell the truth. Yeah, I'm going to kill myself. Wow. Can we hear her say that Um, now? Yeah. But she's still sticking by her story. She said that he had been missing for eight years. The police held a press conference and they stated that it doesn't seem like as of now they will be pressing any charges against, yeah, against Janie. They said that there is, in their belief, no evidence of SA and being missing is not illegal. Being MIA is not illegal. I don't know why they can't charge her with like obstruction of justice or anything like that. But they also stated that they're underfunded and overworked or something. They made oh, it a whole thing. What, Personally, what I wonder, is and this is a pure speculation on my part, well, the, this case got so much national attention. I wonder if they admitted that there was SA involved, it would become a, how did the police not check the house? How did they not get a, like a search warrant? How they did, how did they question. not? That's a good question. All of these reports saying, I ain't gonna lie, bro. Rudy has been spotted around the crib multiple times. That wasn't enough to get a search warrant. Just to search the crib, bro. Yo, 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 yo. What's up with the police, bro? What are they good for? <laughs> Why it seem like the laziest niggas is in the police force, bro? <laughs> like, I wonder if they admitted that there was SA involved. It would become a how did the police not check the house? How did they not get a like a search warrant? How they did? How did they not know during the traffic stop? I wonder if it would come back to the police. Yeah, but. Yes. The issue here is Rudy is still under the mom's abuse currently. Yeah. So he is now with a family friend, but we don't know like how far her manipulation is. If she's going to get him to talk to her again. Yeah. Yeah. Like he's so traumatized and so scared and yeah. And the mom got away with it. So how is he going to get better? Yeah. I do. Th that's just my pure speculation. I feel like if they, think that there is SA or if there's more investigation that uncovers something, it could lead to a, wow, the police is incompetent versus They already this, look like a joke right now. That's I know, I'm yeah. Like, I think so too, but <laughs> here we are, right? July 11th, Rudy was finally ready to talk. His face and body were completely blurred in the interview footage. He confirmed that his mom made him stay hidden in the house the entire time. He said, I was... I had free will to leave. She never handcuffed me, but it felt like brainwashing. Eventually, she would lock me in there mentally. She was my only parent. She was the only figure that I had after I lost my brother. When I lost my brother, I didn't have anybody to teach me how to live or even have confidence. Wow. He stated during his captivity, he tried to keep busy. I would study religions and cultures online. I think we should stop putting labels on everything. There should be prosperity, but there is too much depression and anger in the world. He stated that there was no essay. He said, I remember I had to sleep with her, but it wasn't or anything like that. I would not lie about that because there are plenty of people who need help. The media likes to twist my words. I never said anything bad about her in that regard. It was just boundaries she would push. She would make me uncomfortable and I would say stop and she would ask me why I didn't do anything wrong. So I would tell her, okay, and let her do whatever she had to do. I was just a people pleaser. It was just her, her, her all the time. My mom. The interviewer tried to be more specific and they said, what about what Quanell said? About what? Just what he said about the relationship between you and your mom. Specifically? About the... See, that's what I'm saying about the media. I never said anything about intercourse. He didn't get into specifics like that. Yeah, she did want me to play husband, like cook and clean. We know that she wanted you to play the role of a father, but as far as assaults did she ever no she didn't do anything like that i do not need to go file for a rape kid or make a police report i would never it would never be like that i did not have any reference or people to bounce off of as to understand what was a healthy thing or not maybe it was just not me understanding how people worked because she was the only person i ever understood the interview will be linked in the show notes but rudy does speak a lot about um 
it's it is kind of all over the place he speaks about colors and algorithms and how they affect the psyche he would say that the algorithm is what is controlling us through social media and colors so if you see something white you get distracted you see something pink you'd be reminded of someone who's trying to help you and you're reminded of prosperity and love and red reminds you of anger and hate so he was saying that there's a lot of corruption and colors and things like that. So there's there's a lot that's going on. I think there was a, a portion about vaccines. I think that overall, even in the interview, it seems like he's this very incredibly kind, articulate, caring person. That's interesting, But also bro. someone who seems to be suffering quite a bit. I think also maybe the comparison between his initial Facebook post when he was much younger and to now, it does seem like there is more trauma that's being expressed in the way that he communicates is just what a lot of people speculate. Mm -hmm. Right now, he is staying with a family friend, and that is where the case is as of now. Janie is still living at her house in Houston, and no charges have been filed. Bro. What a freaking story. Wow. What? I mean, I don't even know what to say. It's just so ridiculous. This happened like not even really a month ago. So June 29th, but it started unraveling in July. The investigation is still kind of ongoing, they say. But I, I don't think we're going to get updates. But I will keep an eye out for you guys and let you know of any updates that come along. In the meantime, let me know your thoughts in the comments because, I mean... I, I saw this unravel online, I'm sure, like many of you, and it was just so, so out there. Stay safe, and I will see you guys on Sunday for the main episode. Bye. Hi. You stay safe, too. You and your husband. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Bro, 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 bro. No prison time past week news outlets police and others have been sharing different ages of the young texas man who was reportedly found on the steps of a church after being missing for eight years part of the issue could be that rudolph rudy farias who is the subject of news coverage born october 1996 has a half brother with the same first and last name he's just about nine months younger according to records from the texas birth index both men are the son of police officer Rudy Farias III. What is going on? Nah, nah, this case is crazy. That mom needs to go to prison, like for a long ass time, bro. She's still out on the streets. Rudy will never get peace, bro. I hope he gets to a point where he puts his foot down, bro, and says, no, I don't want to see you. You are bugging out of my life before I blast you. I'd never be able to blast my mom, I ain't gonna lie to you, so I know Rudy wouldn't be able to, but you know, like, I just want her to get some comeuppance, something. She doesn't deserve to be free, bro. Man, this shit was crazy. This shit was crazy. Her usual, Ron Mango. Excellent storytelling. Oh my God, bro. The mom needs to be in prison. I don't know how many times I'm gonna say it, but I think I'm gonna say it until she's in prison, bro. All right, enough of me. No, seriously, enough of me. It's been your boy, Charlie Louie. Good day, good afternoon, good night, good evening, good morning, and most importantly, and unfortunately, goodbye. Stay safe. Word, word. I'm gonna see y'all tomorrow. Kane. Yo, it's the end. Huh? Leave a like and share it to your friends and your kin. Huh? When I post a video, I'm gonna need y'all to attend. Huh? Thank you for the view, huh? but I ain't done with you. 2023, I'm about to be Jordan with the flu. Huh? Yeah, join a tribe. Huh? Yeah, join a tribe. I'm gonna need y'all to subscribe.